Let's talk about alpha GPC, alpha glycerophosphocholine. Now, I recently posted a short discussing a study that showed that people who regularly used alpha GPC saw an increased risk of stroke and the risk was greater the longer they took it and the higher the dosages they took. A lot of people wanted to know more about this. Why would this be a problem? Um, why would I have to worry about my alpha GPC supplement? You know, GPC, or choline is, is a, a critical nutrient. Why would there be negative effects from that? So today we're gonna cover alpha GPC more comprehensively. We're gonna talk about what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to work, what are the potential risks. We're gonna jump into TMAO, trimethylamine and oxide, which is believed to be mediating the negative effects of long-term alpha GPC. And then finally, we're gonna talk about are there potential supplements we could take that may give us the same benefit, help us hit our choline target, our daily choline target of 550 milligrams per day without the negative long-term risk. So let's jump in. Now, alpha GPC is a nootropic supplement, meaning it's believed to enhance cognitive abilities. And that is because alpha GPC increases levels of choline in the brain. And why is this important? Choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter used in the brain. And in people with dementia and Alzheimer's, there's a decrease in uh, acetylcholine activity. So the belief is if you increase acetylcholine, it may provide benefit in protecting from those conditions. But acetylcholine is used in other things. For example, there's something called the anti-inflammatory reflex mediated by your vagus nerve. And that is uh, mediated when the vagus nerve senses inflammation and it releases acetylcholine to help lower it. And finally, acetylcholine is also the primary neurotransmitter for muscular contractions, so we may be able to enhance cognitive abilities, decrease inflammation, and enhance muscular output. But what are the potential risks? Now, the potential risk, what might be mediating this uh, risk of stroke is something called trimethylamine and oxide, TMAO. Now, TMAO is kind of given a bad rap, there's a little nuance here. Now, if you consume fish, your TMAO levels are gonna go up pretty high. And that's because fish contains TMAO, especially deep sea fish, because it, it actually helps prevent these fish uh, surviving in the um, higher forces down, um, down in the lower depths of the ocean. Now, we have fish, we also have red meat. Red meat also contains TMAO, so when you consume red meat, you'll spike TMAO a little bit. Fortunately, the kidneys are responsible for getting rid of TMAO and they're pretty good at doing that. At least when you're young, as you get older, they become less effective at doing that. It is not believed that just spiking your TMAO levels a little bit here or there by consuming fish or occasionally consuming red meat are going to be problematic for you. The problem comes when your microbiome begins pumping out a lot of TMAO. Now, the microbiome makes it out of two precursors, L-carnitine and choline. So if you deliver a lot of these into the colon, the, aka they're not absorbed, you may begin producing a microbiome that creates a lot of TMAO. That's going to sustain levels for a long period of time, which may be mediating the stroke risk. And as I mentioned, uh, as you get older, you become less effective at excreting it in your urine. So it builds up and it stays they're higher, longer. However, it's also important to point out that we don't really have proof that it's TMAO that's actually causing the problem. Yes, elevated TMAO is a marker of potential cardiovascular risk, potential stroke risk, but it might just be an innocent bystander. Your microbiome that produces TMAO may also be problematic for other reasons. Uh, for example, TMAO tends to, um, a microbiome that makes a lot of TMAO also has a lot of lipopolysaccharide, which increases inflammation, or it could be through something else. However, Regardless, it doesn't matter. Elevated TMAO levels are not something you want to actively do, particularly if you don't need to do it. Fortunately, we have a new study, and uh, well, a new meaning 2021, where they actually fed um, four different types of choline supplements to humans because before that, the idea that alpha GPC increases choline levels in the brain came from rat studies. Or alternatively, there was a study in humans that found that it increased choline in the blood, but this is through intramuscular injection, which doesn't mean anything with regard to you consuming a uh, alpha GPC supplement every single day. This new study took four different types of choline supplements, alpha GPC, choline bitartrate, choline chloride, and egg PC or egg lecithin, and fed them 
get making sure that they were standardized to give the individuals 550 milligrams per day of choline, which is the daily requirement. They measured choline, alpha GPC, and other choline metabolites, as well as TMAO. And what they found was between all four supplements, it didn't matter. They increased choline levels exactly the same amount. Additionally, they increased alpha GPC levels in the blood exactly the same amount. The one thing that they didn't increase the same amount was TMAO. Alpha GPC, choline bitartrate, and choline chloride all increased TMAO, likely because they're water soluble, taking high doses probably leaves some for the colon, and doing it over and over and over again is going to push that microbiome to create more TMAO. Egg PC or egg lecithin did not. This might be because egg lecithin, egg PC is fat soluble. So as long as you're consuming it with meals, you will increase absorption and you'll have less available in the colon. That's at least what the study showed here. At the very least, it was not producing TMAO. So if you had the choice, would you take an alpha GPC supplement? I certainly wouldn't. I would take egg lecithin. I mean, personally, I don't do either. I just consume eggs regularly. Um, but if you're looking to supplement, that's something you can do. Now the dosages, the alpha GPC dose was right around what people consume, 1300 milligrams a day. What's the dose you need to eat of uh, egg PC in order to get the same amount of choline? That was around 4,000 milligrams per day. So again, this, is this something that you absolutely need to take? Well, probably not. Uh, you're increasing choline levels in the blood doesn't mean it's going into the brain. But if you do need to do it, I wouldn't necessarily take alpha GPC. It's generally more expensive. And if it's going to increase TMAO, you might as well move over uh, and take egg lecithin because it's going to provide the same benefit with no drawbacks. So that's basically all I got. Would love to hear your questions. Um, drop them into the comment section. And thank you very much for listening in and take care.